Hello and welcome to our media guests. We're here to give you a little bit of an update on what's going on in our region about COVID and also what's happening within Guthrie. But before I get to that, I want to take a moment and thank some people. First and foremost, I want to thank our frontline staff. They are really doing a great job. They're compassionate and concerned and courageous as we deal with these incredibly difficult times. And I want to thank our donors and our community. We have experienced an incredible outpouring of support from equipment and supplies to people donating their time or money uh, or special talents. Uh, it's been very gratifying and supportive in this difficult time. So I now want to turn it over to Dr. Mike Scalzone, our Chief Quality Officer, to give you an update on the organization and what we're doing about COVID. Thank you, Dr. Scopoletti. Um, as with all of you, we've been carefully tracking um, the spread of the virus across the states that we serve. And while we do see some encouraging signs that that spread may be slowing down, we really don't know what is going to happen to our area. So we are preparing for a large number of patients. Um, we um, currently do have some patients in our hospital um, that have COVID-19, um, and we have seen in our local communities, in our, in our counties, in our area, there has been some increase in the number of, of patients that um, are being diagnosed. Um, we've built our readiness around three main areas, and that is having our facilities prepared for patients to come, about having our staff ready, and making sure we have enough equipment. So each of these is an important part of what we, what we do each day. So our facilities are prepared for, for at least a 50% increase and then sometimes a 100% increase in the number of patients we need to take care of. We've developed alternative sites for care as needed um, and a number of different um, ways of making sure we're ready for that. Our staff are also prepared. So we have increased the number of staff that are on the ready, ready to come in and take care of patients as needed. And in some cases, we've increased some training so that if someone has to do a slightly different job, um, they're ready for that. From an equipment standpoint, um, there's much in the news, of course, about personal protective equipment and ventilators. Um, and we feel confident right now that we have adequate supplies to be able to take care of our patients. Of course, we really don't know what that volume of patients is going to be, and so that will change as time goes on. There are um, many, many people that are working to get ready, as Dr. Scopoletti said. Many folks um, focus on the frontline clinicians, the physicians, and the nurses, but I do want to express just how many people behind the scenes that maybe people don't think about quite as often in the hard work they're doing. For example, our envir environmental services team, keeping our facility clean and safe, or our purchasing team as they scour looking for supplies that we're gonna need. Um, and then something like our lab staff, who are always you know, staying up to date with the testing that is required and what the newest changes are. We also are having a number of changes in the ambulatory environment in our offices, and Dr. Bloom is gonna come up and talk a little bit about those changes. Dr. Bloom. Thank you, Dr. Scalzone. I'm pleased to be able to talk to you today about telemedicine services that Guthrie now offers. Guthrie is balancing the need for social distancing with the need for patients to get care. And telemedicine is a great way for patients to safely receive needed care from the convenience of their own home. Over the last three weeks, we have increased the number of Guthrie providers who are able to provide telemedicine services to over 400 of our physicians and advanced practice providers. These services are able to be provided to patients through their uh, video chat technology on their cell phones, through the camera on their laptops, through their desktops, all through our eGuthrie platform. I'm a family physician. I see many patients in follow-up throughout the year. We've, I've found that some of these patients with diabetes or hypertension or high cholesterol, I can see through a telemedicine virtual visit sometime throughout the year for some of those yearly visits and have a great relationship, a good discussion with the patient in a way that's safe and convenient and efficient for the patient as well. When a patient makes the appointment for a video visit, a virtual visit, our staff will walk them through the process, make it easy for them to complete this visit. They'll sign them up for eGuthrie, they'll show them the technology, the download that's necessary, and they'll 
the day of the visit, they'll walk them into the virtual conference room, the virtual waiting room, so that they are ready to see the provider who then logs in and they are able to have this visit uh, face to face. These visits are very helpful now, but I think they are gonna be important even in the future for us as we look at how medicine is practiced. But we still see patients face to face. And for those patients who need a face to face visit, uh, we are seeing patients in our offices now. We are being very careful to segregate the sick patients from the healthy patients, to make sure that after a patient is seen that the area is disinfected, that staff and physicians are masked appropriately and patients masked appropriately. We're even doing much of our COVID testing from the car so that those patients never even need to come into the office. And so that patients that need to be seen in our facilities are safeguarded for their safety. As we move past this COVID-19 crisis, we're all anxious to get back to normal. And many of the things will go back to normal. However, I think telemedicine visits are one of those things that are always gonna be a part of what we do in the future. The technology platform that Guthrie has invested in is gonna make it better for us to provide this care to patients in a very safe and convenient manner going forward. I'd next like to introduce Dr. Larry Sampson, who is our chairman of surgery. Dr. Sampson. Hi, I'm Larry Sampson. As chairman of surgery for the Guthrie Healthcare System, I wanted to take a moment and review with you where we were at with regards to surgical services throughout the Guthrie Healthcare System. In respect of the recommendations made by our national, political, and medical leaders, we have continued the postponement of elective surgical procedures through April. This also reflects the continued national shortage of uh, medical and surgical supplies. Primarily, this reflects our concern with the safety of our patients, our communities, and our staff, which primarily informs all of the decisions we are making at this point, as they always do. I wanted to review our process for determining which cases get done and which cases do not. The individual surgeon reviews the patient's specific case and then discusses this with their colleagues and the section head that's pertinent to their specialty. This decision is then reviewed with a multi-specialty committee and then uh, the surgeries go ahead. To date, all decisions have been consistent at each level. We look forward to the time when we can resume surgical services. It is what we, it is what defines us as individuals as well as physicians. It is not clear when this time will be, but come the end of April, we will be reviewing the recommendations of our national political leaders, our national and state political and medical leaders, our specialty societies, and where we're at with regards to the needs we have for equipment to perform our surgeries. We will also consider how the pandemic is relative to our specific communities and the safety of our patients and staff. Things may not go right back to normal, as Dr. Bloom says, but we will continue to focus on the safety of our patients and our communities, and we will continue to focus on the surgical care of our patients. Throughout this time, we are here for you, so I want you to feel comfortable calling your surgeon's office if you have any questions or concerns or to update them on anything you want or need or questions you have. 
we are still and always will be here for you. In closing, I'd like to bring back Dr. Scopoletti. Thank you, Larry. Um, I do want to bring back Dr. Scalzone for a minute. Um, these are confusing times. The nightly news is reporting on hotspots across the country, the so-called hotspots, places like New York City and Detroit and New Orleans. And that is creating uh, a, a tremendous amount of fear and anxiety uh, within uh, the community and also within the organization, our clinical staff in particular. Um, I'd like uh, Dr. Scalzone to maybe review some of the statistics on coronavirus and, and its effect on the population. Because at one, on one hand, there are these intense hotspots like New York City where there is really an overwhelming disease. And then there are uh, areas like, fortunately, the Twin Tiers where the prevalence of this virus is, is moving much more slowly uh, and we're not experiencing the kind of severity. Um, that mixed message uh, will give people, um, uh, will make it hard for people to decide what is right for them to do. And so I want Dr. Scalzone to talk a little bit about the statistics. Thank you, Dr. Scopoletti. You know, it's the time of year when people may have some symptoms. They might have some sinus congestion, they may have a cough or a sore throat, and we understand that they may then worry, do I have the coronavirus? And so we are ready and strongly would encourage you to call your primary care physician and we can have you come in and get tested. It's important to know that even if you do have COVID-19, the vast majority, over 80%, have very mild symptoms. So you may feel poorly for a while, but you will not have severe disease, will not need to be hospitalized, or will not have a condition that really threatens your life. So while it is very scary to not know, um, I do want to reassure people that over 95% of the tests that we do on patients that have those concerns are negative for COVID-19. And even for those that do have the coronavirus infection, most of the time, it's a very mild case. So uh, I want to close with um, a thank you, particularly to our clinical staff, nurses, care partners, physicians, mid-level uh, providers like nurse practitioners and physician's assistants. They are really on the front lines and they're doing a great job. Uh, we are very grateful for the courage uh, that they display uh, along with their normal compassion and concern for our patients. And so to all of those people, uh, I, I want to say that we are very grateful and proud of the work that they do. Um, and in closing, I, I want to also uh, remind the public to uh, be careful and stay safe.